Jocko Willink makes a decision every morning to get up very early. And he has a saying, my ability to make this decision now will translate to other decisions I make in my life. I apply this to cold showers. So I'm going to share my technique with cold showers, why I think they're super important. I take cold showers in the morning because I think it's important for me to make that difficult decision and it's not an option every, every single morning in order to, I guess, steer myself away from a natural hedonistic tendency, which is very much a monkey driven response. Um, you know, the, the chimpanzee uh, monkey aspects of ourselves, they don't want to waste energy. They don't want to expose you to risk. Cold is essentially associated with death to, to the subconscious mind. So it's, it's not something desirable, um, but it is an illusion. I mean, you aren't actually going into the Arctic and you're not going to be exposed there for a, an indeterminate period of time. So it's important to recognize that this response, it is an illusion and you can transcend that response. So I'll share my technique first and then I'll talk about some of the other uh, interesting, I suppose the interesting parts of the response and, and the potential benefits there are in, in changing your relationship to cold. So the first thing I will do is I'll lure myself in with a warm shower because in adherence is important. So luring, luring yourself in with a warm shower helps. If you were starting off with a cold shower every morning, chances are you're gonna chicken out eventually when it gets to winter. So starting off with warm is important. Then I'll lather myself up with soap. Sorry, I'll turn off the hot tap. I'll make sure I'm lathered up with soap so that when I switch to cold, I'm gonna to have to cover every single area and I'm not gonna be able to chicken out of that either. I'm going to flip the tap to cold while I'm standing back and I'll be staring at that stream of water. And at this point in time, your monkey brain is going to go, nah, don't feel like doing this. This is stupid. It's crazy. You don't have to do it this morning. But it's important to recognize that as that occurs, that is not your conscious mind doing that. That is a subconscious response that's interested in self-preservation. It wants to take the efficient pathway. It doesn't want to waste energy or expose yourself to risk. Recognizing that in that moment as it's occurring is extremely powerful. It's very rare that we get exposed to having awareness of perhaps lower aspects of the mind that are engaged in an illusion. And for you to have awareness and to see that as, is, as it's occurring is incredibly powerful. So that part I feel is the most interesting part for me. That's, I get a lot out of the kick of pushing against that, that part of myself that wants to chicken out. After this point, I'll expose the palms of my hands to the cold because there are conductive pathways here. And I'll link, a, um, I'll link an episode on the Huberman podcast to uh, how this works, but I'll expose the palms of my hands and then I will expose my face as well. And I'll try to keep them both in there simultaneously. Um, cold water on the face will trigger a mammalian response. It changes your efficiency, uh, changes your metabolic efficiency, changes your heart rate, your breathing rate. Your breathing requirements actually become reduced when you do this uh, so that, for example, if you were to be submerged in water, you can actually hold your breath longer by triggering this mammalian response. So anyway, I will hold myself there for as long as possible to acclimate until I start to feel warm. And then I will uh, expose you know, water all across the top of my head. And then after this point, at the point where I feel comfortable, I will also then go to the back of my neck. Now this part's debatable, and we'll talk about why later, but here there's, uh, this is essentially a thermostat. You can kind of cheat by using this. And perhaps if you want to push yourself further, it's, be it's probably better to leave this until the end or maybe not even do it at all. But by applying the cold water here, you'll get an immediate shock and it'll take a while, maybe, maybe 10 seconds, maybe 20 seconds before you'll actually start to feel warmer because of the connected brown fat tissue that you have here. Um, this is going to actually start to increase your core body temperature. So it's, it's actually debatable as to whether or not this is a good thing, but 
I figure if it's not going to kill me and I can increase my caloric burn rate, then why not? Um, the fellow on the Huberman podcast debates that. Um, but unfortunately, in that podcast, they're focused entirely on athletic performance, which is not the reason why I'm doing this. So after that point, the rest of it's probably, it's kind of a cakewalk because my, my core body temperature increases. So I'm holding myself there until I feel comfortable. Then I'm going to apply the cold water to the front of my body. And I'm going to, again, stay there until I feel comfortable. I'll do each of my armpits, which is relatively difficult, but not as difficult as the first part. And um, then I'll cover, I'll cover my back. And then I'll, I'll turn around and I'll cover all areas again and again until I realize that, well, at the point where I'm turning off that cold tap, I'm turning it off because I want to and I'm not turning it off because I'm chickening out. So that is essentially the technique that I use each morning. I'm kind of winging it a bit because there are a few areas that I'm unclear on. Um, some of the discoveries that have been made recently actually are turning this into a debatable area. Like, for example, on the Huberman podcast, they talk about how these conductive pathways um, and in the palms of hands and, and, and the base of the feet can be used by athletes to, to ab absolutely smash their upper limits uh, with regard to muscle and weight training and improving their repetitions um, and, and also running because thermal limits in the muscles are actually one of the bottlenecks for being able to like push past a personal best. So that is that is one interesting point as to whether or not you're, you know, are you having a cold shower before a workout in order to improve performance? Then your technique is going to be totally different. Um, my main reason is in order to make a difficult decision, to sorry, make a difficult decision and to feel really good in the morning. And I also don't need coffee when I do this. This is far superior to coffee. I have uh, mental sharpness and clarity that uh, far exceeds coffee and it, tran it, it translates throughout the entire day. So <clears throat> the other thing about this experience that I find really interesting, uh, my relationship to cold changed maybe about four years ago when I first went to a Scandinavian styled spa out of Vancouver. And I went from a, a steam room into a plunge pool, <clears throat> which I think it had a temperature between eight and 12 degrees, some, somewhere around there. And I had this amazing experience when I made the decision to submerge myself and stay underwater for as long as possible. And at that time I could hold my breath for a minute and a half to two minutes. And when I submerged myself, there was, there was a very interesting experience I had where I recognized these thoughts that were arising to get me to chicken out in response to the cold areas of my body. But I also felt this inner core heat um, deep in my chest that felt very comfortable. I felt safe and um, I felt like I could just keep on doing this. And to experience both those sensations simultaneously and to also experience the edge, the edge of where that core heat was and where it wasn't and to see the response in my mind as I was seeing the edge of those two depths in my body finally it was like something went pop and i could i started to experience that 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 sensation and that fear of the cold which is a deep it's like a deep response you want to get the fuck out of there but that to actually experience that that response was an illusion was was a a profoundly transformative experience for me i then started that's then translated to other areas where uh, say with deep tissue massage i was able to also experience that pain as well on some level um it is an illusion and that if you aren't you know if, if you aren't actually in harm's way um that you can change your relationship to pain as well so um 
that experience with cold, I found it's, it's one of the most unique experience, uh, experiences that I've had. Um, I would compare it with, you know, other like immensely, um, powerful experiences that someone might have in their life, like perhaps being exposed to sex or psychedelics. There's nothing else in that I've experienced that changed, that was able to change my relationship to these like incredibly subconscious, powerful subconscious responses that we normally just react unconsciously to. Um, so I hope this is useful. If there's any, uh, adjustments that you think I should be making to this technique, or you think that some of my understanding of the use of the back and neck should perhaps be modified, I'd, I'd very much like to hear it. Um, but I hope this is useful.